Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For months, you could hear the word echoing from congressional offices and television studios all over Washington. Russia, Russia, Russia. The very people who spent 70 years making excuses for the Soviet Union were suddenly convinced that Russian agents had visited our shores in the dead of night to murder American democracy and install their puppet in our White House. Trump won because of Vladimir Putin. That was their claim. It seemed confusing to most people, but to our decadent and deeply unimpressive ruling class, the explanation made perfect sense. How else could their candidate, the candidate of both Nancy Pelosi and the Bush family, have lost last November's election? Well, the media assured them that would never happen. In fact, a year ago today, the New York Times ran this prediction, quote, Hillary Clinton has a 93 percent chance to win, and they believed it. When she didn't win, our elites assumed a foreign power must have intervened. No other explanation made sense to them. The only thing they lacked was evidence that it had happened. And so to find that, they told us we needed an immediate all-hands-on-deck investigation of Russian interference. So we got one. Boy, did we. It turned out to be one of the most comprehensive investigations of anything in the history of this country. The FBI kicked it off and was soon joined by a fully staffed Office of Independent Counsel, as well as both houses of Congress. Almost every media outlet in America jumped obediently on board, pouring massive resources into a news story that started to look a lot like a conspiracy theory. But ahead they went. An entire generation of non-Russian-speaking cable news hosts remade themselves into amateur criminologists. Remember that? The frenzy spun out of control. And soon, liberals weren't simply talking about a stolen election, but about war, actual war. If Russia is going to keep attacking America, then America really should fight back. There is an entire building in St. Petersburg filled with a Russian troll army, creating thousands of tweets, memes, news site comments, and flat-out fake stories designed not to take sides on any issue, but just to get us fighting about it. Hillary Clinton spent over a billion dollars on the campaign, and the Russians beat her with 150 grand because they were able to turn Facebook into fake book. So you're accusing a nuclear-armed adversary of committing an act of war, and you're doing it purely in order to gain an advantage in a domestic political dispute? No normal person would do that. It's too reckless and crazy. Yeah, that's exactly what many of our leaders did, including, by the way, sitting members of Congress. They called it war, too. Mass hysteria does not even begin to capture this. We are living in a moment that makes the McCarthy era look reasoned and considered. At least Joe McCarthy was on to something real. There really were Soviet spies. There was no Russian collusion in last year's election. So how are all those investigations going? Well, the New York Times, to its credit, took a look at that this weekend. And it turns out that if the Russians got Trump elected, they left no trace of it. Even Senator Dianne Feinstein of California had to admit that after wasting untold time and money, her committee has not found evidence of collusion between Putin and the Trump campaign. The whole thing is a dry well, a crock, a fraud, a scam, a politically induced hallucination. It's totally nuts. A lot of people should be deeply ashamed of this. Not that they are, of course. But that doesn't mean we haven't learned anything. Robert Mueller's team of, of investigators apparently has found evidence of suspected wrongdoing by the Podesta Group, which you'll remember is a lobbying firm founded by Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, and his brother, Tony. According to news accounts, the Podestas may have violated criminal law by failing to register as lobbyists for foreign powers. Not exactly the development Democrats were hoping for when they cheered Mueller's appointment as independent counsel. And then there's the ongoing Uranium One scandal, which has been explained in a series of devastating pieces by the Hill newspaper. Back in 2010, in a move that virtually nobody will now defend, the Obama administration allowed a Russian firm to gain control over about 20 percent of our uranium reserves here in the United States. Before the deal was approved, Obama's Department of Justice uncovered a massive Russian racketeering and bribery ring working to get control of that uranium. The Obama administration kept that information secret, even from Congress, and let that deal go through. Now, why would they do that? Did it have anything to do with the more than $100 million Hillary Clinton's family foundation took from Uranium One board members? She was the Secretary of State at the time. Maybe. Just a guess. At some point, we'll find out for sure.
And that's the upside of the hysteria over Russian collusion. Its unintended consequences will be fun to watch. Because when you make up a fake scandal, you never really know where it's going to go.